when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay, run it back. Okay, always locked in, I don't got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batted 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't got to ask. Welcome to a very special episode of the Hitting the Field podcast. It is your host, Jeremy Brenner, and today's date is October 1, 2019. And October means two things. According to Jasmine Haynes, our, week, our guest last week, it means spooky season, and it means MLB playoff season. And I'm so excited to dive deep into all things over the next month with two of some new guests here on the podcast. We got um, the OG, the original, the creator of the Hitting the Field intro, Mr. Charlie Reyes. Charlie, what's going on, man? Let's go, man. I'm yeah. happy, to be, happy to be here, you, man. I'm ready to talk this baseball. I'm so happy it's October, waiting all year for this. You've been waiting for this. I, I can tell. Waiting. I can tell. I can tell. And it's it's. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. But we also got uh, one of the newest HTF rookies on the block. We have Miss Emily Hernandez. Emily, what's going on, man? Kind of nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. You're nervous. But I'm really excited. Don't be nervous. It's Don't okay. Nervous. I'm really excited. It's literally only us. <laughs> and you're talking baseball. <laughs> but you're you're new to the to the HTF family, um, and you're new to our listeners and viewers. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you uh, found your way to Hitting the Field. So I found Hitting the Field through um, Jarrett at in one of my classes. What, and a, what a legend, Jarrett Kaplan. He is. Shout, he out, is. shout out JK. And um, basically he was like, if you're into sports, come. And I was like, okay. And then here I am. That's literally where a lot of our rookies have come <laughs> from. It's crazy. I told I told Jarrett, I'm like, Jarrett, you're in that class. You should talk to people. Yeah. And that's where a lot of our uh, newest rookies have come from. So shout out to Jarrett Kaplan on that. Um, so we're just going to go right into it. So you know, baseball playoffs start tonight, um, eight, I believe it's like some weird time. That's the weird thing that kind of irks me about baseball playoffs is the, the, there's the weird start times. Like, like, why can't it just be eight o'clock every night? Or why can't it just be eight oh five? Like it's it like is in the one, regular season. One's like seven, one, like one's like seven. Eight oh eight tonight. Eight oh eight tonight. Eight oh eight. Eight oh eight. Not eight oh nine. Yankee no. game on Friday is like, like seven. And yeah. One's at like five on But Saturday. no, it's not, it's not seven. It's seven oh seven. Yeah. Like, like it, it can't just be seven. Like that, that's what irks me about it. I think it's like the, um, I think first pitch is what they mean. Seven oh seven. Okay. But if that first pitch does not go out at eight oh eight tonight. I'm, I'm throwing a riot. I'm, <laughs> it's it. It's over. Um, so throwing out the first pitch tonight is Max Scherzer, ace for the Washington Nationals. And uh, he's taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. So the Brewers and the Nationals, two very different uh, paths to get here. You know, the Nationals, very few, I think, expected the Nationals to uh, be in the position that they're in hosting the NL wildcard game after losing Bryce Harper in the off season. And, uh, but they have, they have really held their own this season. Um, the nationals sit at a record of, I believe they had 92 wins over the season. Not bad. Not yeah. Bad. Not bad at all. 93 wins. They got the last one. They, they won eight straight to end the season. And, they won the wild card by uh, a fair margin, four games. Not bad. So um, I want to start with you, Charlie. Uh, Washington, why how, why are they in this position? How have they got here? What, what makes this team a playoff team? I think what makes this team a playoff team is like um, these new guys stepping up. You know, we've seen a lot. You know, Bryce Harper is really the anchor in their offense. Guys like Anthony Rendon stepped up this year. Howie Kendrick and, you know, Juan Soto, his second year in the league. He's just doing great. Um, I think, you know, they've always had decent starters. Their bullpen hasn't always been 
the best. But I think you know Strasburg and Scherzer, they're finally getting it together, and I think um I think they're really playing as a team. I think with with all that Harper madness going on in the summer, like a lot of people didn't expect them to be here, but like you know they crept up, they kept playing, they kept playing um throughout the whole season to just finally get in the spot. We you know we've seen the Nationals time and time again when Harper was in in the playoffs. Um, you know, lose first round, lose first round, lose first round, always all the time. I think this year might be that, that you know, that time they uh, go to the next round and, you know, maybe do something. Yeah. Emily, like what what has brought the Nationals to this point? Why are they here? Honestly, I feel like they were kind of motivated by losing Harper to kind of show everyone that they're not the underdog, that they can still, you know, pull through even though they don't have that big name of Bryce Harper. But um, honestly, I think they're here to make a make a statement, and they're doing it. That's a statement they have made for sure. So here's here's the setup with the Nationals. Um, they they have Scherzer tonight, and look with in a one like the 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 thing about a one like the wild card is a one game playoff in in baseball. It's it's difficult to gauge, you know, like it, it's difficult to kind of set teams apart from one game and you know it's something that it's it's the biggest critique of the wild cards ever since it started honestly honestly i really think um the wild card is dope but i really think it needs to go to a three game like best of three yeah because baseball is a game where like you know anything can really happen in one game like you know one game doesn't define a team or the team are being good or bad this isn't football this isn't college basketball even college basketball i think that you know that these one game these uh, uh, one game elimination that's, that's it's hard it isn't necessarily indicative of who is the better team at all like i think we it's who wins that day yeah it, it's who's better on that day like i think for an example like you look at the cubs last year the cubs yeah. won 94 games that was the best record in the nl last year and they they lost one game well they lost the playoff the playoff tiebreaker or the, the, tie the division tiebreaker then they lost them they lost them walking in, in the tiebreaker and then like who they lost to the rockies they lost to the rockies Jeez, yeah like and come on. and the cubs arguably were a better team than the rockies last year but the rockies won and albeit the rockies lost in three game in a sweep to the yeah, brewers clipped. these very brewers so i want to switch over to the brewers now brewers two consecutive seasons making the playoffs and but this year they don't have Christian Yelich and that is going to be a big loss Emily how is how are the Brewers going to recover from the loss of um Christian Yelich well since um losing Yelich they kind of stepped it up each everybody kind of did their part so they have been um I guess scrambling to um fit the pieces that Yelich um was and um, for this game, I feel like they're going to just continue to do what they were doing um, and really um, come together and pull through, even though, like, make up for their, their loss, I guess you could say. It's possible. Charlie, what do you, what do you th- like, how, how does this team, like, you lose the MVP. How, how do you recover from that? I think you don't. I don't. I don't, I, th- I don't think they could recover without Yelich. I think he was like that big spark. Like when, whenever, like you know, the Brewers needed a big hit, you know, Yelich is there. Yelich is there in the clutch. He's there. He's there throughout the whole game, and you know, he, he plays good defense. But I just, and then especially with um with them losing Lorenzo Cain, or he, he's questionable to play. But um, or Ryan Braun might not play this game. I think it's it's gonna be really quiet for them. Like Woodruff, you know, they expect him to do pretty good because he's coming back from injury. But I don't really see it. I just like you know, they just lost three to three to the Rockies at the end when they really needed those wins to um to try to take the um uh, try to take the Central over the Cardinals. And right there, that's just showing that they couldn't close out these games. That's true. And against the Rockies. Like the Rockies, this is not the same Rockies as last year. This no. is this they is, were injured all year. They're injured all year. They're just not a very good team yeah. this year. So like, how you lo- losing low scoring games against the Rockies? You're not gonna you're not gonna beat the Nationals who put up way more runs than you. I will say this though: the Brewers' record this season without Christian Yelich, it's been good. Twenty and seven. Yeah. That. Yeah. That, that is uh, about almost seven fifty. And their ERA in the last month is pretty good compared to the whole season. Yeah, I mean. To, it, it's kind of weird because the the playoff races kind of ended like a couple days early this year. It wasn't like last year where there were tiebreakers even after 162. Yeah. So, you know, it was it kind of made for 
somewhat of an anticlimactic finish, at least in the National it League. Was pretty, it, it was pretty close. I like, mean, you know, usually I, li- I like to see it at least go down to the last week. Yeah. I hate when, um, when teams are like, they're clinching in like second week of September. Like, that's not fun. I, I, you know, I hate it when the Yankees clinch in the second week of September. You know, it's hard. Yeah, I it's hate it. Out here. Um, <laughs> but I kind of want to dive into tonight's matchup. So the Brewers on the road tonight, they, they went on the road last year in the game 163 against the Cubs they won. This team is playoff battle tested. Mike Mustakas has a has playoff experience with the Brewers and the Royals. Lorenzo Kane who g- did get hurt, he's questionable for tonight. I think he's going to play. I, I I believe knowing Lorenzo Kane, I think I, I expect him to play too. But you know, Emily, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to finish the sentence for me. The Brewers will win tonight's game because Oof. Um, pitching. Oof. Pitching. I'm going to say pitching. Yeah, so like... I feel like their pitching is going to really come through today. Brandon Woodruff is starting this game for the Brewers. And Woodruff started the... Woodruff was their number one last year in the postseason. He started some pretty important games. I, I can't remember exactly if he started the first game in the Divisional Series, but I definitely do remember he started the first game in the Championship Series against the Dodgers. So they put, You know what's crazy? A lot of people forget they went to seven against the Dodgers last year in the they NLCS. They did. They did. And they were that close to the World Series and facing the Red Sox. I don't know if that would have worked out super super good for them, but you know they did lose Game 7 at home. Um, so, but here's... so. The thing about the Brewers here is they're facing a really hot team right here. The Nationals are probably the hottest team in baseball right now. They are. They are what, uh, 9-1 and one last 10 games? 9-1 and one the last 10 games, won their last 8 straight. It's it's not an easy test, especially going into... But it's still a one, it's still a one game, so it's like you can come in hot and lose this game. It's very easy. That's very true, and and then just like that, that those you know your run to the season, it's over. I just think um, Scherzer's going to come in. Um, did you, when the Tigers went to the World Series back in the day, was Scherzer on that team or no? Yes, yeah, Scherzer was on that team. Mm-hmm. I just think like he, like Scherzer, ever since he left the. Detroit, but that was let's let's see, that was Justin Verlander's that was, rotation. Yeah, that yes. was it was it was, but um. I feel like Scherzer's going to really come in. Ever since he left the Tigers, he's kind of been like, you know, he's been the ace for the Nationals. He's been that guy you want to give the ball to. I think he's going to really come in locked in tonight. I think there's nothing going to be able to stop him. They, um, they've never been in a walk. The Nationals have never been in a walk card game, right? No, right? They, they usually win. It's they, been a while. But, yeah, usually, usually they would win, win the division. division. Yeah. So, so, like, so now I feel like, you know, I think he's going to really come in locked in. I think, I really think it's going to be easily a Nationals win. They're going to be home. It's going to be rocking. Yeah. Day. Um. Emily, does Scherzer need to go nine tonight? Does he need to pitch the whole game, or does does how how many innings does Scherzer need to pitch in order to help the Nationals win this game? I think he's gonna have to rely on management and really like play by the ear because mm-hmm. you're not. It's one game. You're not gonna know right off the bat what is gonna happen. So um, I feel like maybe he'll go maybe he'll go five innings before having to. To get switched out, but um, he's gonna. I mean, you're gonna have to put up a fight regardless because it is a one game, one game deal. But um, I think he's gonna go five, and then they're gonna end up having to call a bullpen. So yeah, that's that's the one thing about the postseason though is you have to like managers. That's where they make their money is yeah. in the postseason. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, managing is a lot is a different animal in the playoffs than it is in the regular season, and. You know, yes, this is the first um, NL wild card game for the Washington Nationals. So, um, but he, here's my thing: you need to win this game, like literally, and that and that's the beauty of a of a game seven. That's the beauty of a wild card game is you need to do whatever it takes to make sure your team and gets out of this game a win, a winner. So, here's my question, Charlie: Yeah, if Scherzer does need to come out, if he's like if his pitch count's getting high, and that that's honestly, I think what the Brewers' best strategy is to win this game is. Get Scherzer's pitch count up. You get his pitch count up. I, I don't be surprised. You see Strasburg coming. That's what I was going to ask you. Don't be surprised because I, I, you know, games like this, we we've seen it before, and especially NL teams, they'll they'll throw another starter out there. Like they they they're really trying to just get to the playoffs and like um get to the ALDS and be like, hey, we'll figure it out later. 
You yeah. Know, that that that's really the goal. This is like you know I figured out later. You know we we've seen in the playoffs that you know like you know teams like the Yankees they're going to use CC in the bullpen. And and good teams yeah. and good teams are able to, you know, work past anything. Yeah, of if course. They, if yeah. they want to win, it. if they remember back, you're gonna be a championship. You got to face well, adversity. At I some see. Point. I really started seeing a lot of of that. You know, just throw on pitchers whenever in 2016 that World Series. Remember, they used yeah. to see, you used to see Andrew Miller in the fifth inning by the Indians by Terry Francona. You used to see Chapman in the seventh inning. Like, what are y'all doing? And and then you know, Chapman used to be like, man, if they if Joe Madden wants me to throw three innings, I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Like, no, <laughs> you gotta. Yeah, it's just it's a whole different animal. It makes for a lot more. I feel um, like Andrew Miller that yeah. that series was burnt out. Like yeah. they kept putting them in fifth inning, try to get him three innings a game. Like you, no man, you got to know your players. Yeah. And I think that, but I'll say this: Craig Council and Craig Council with all the injuries he's faced, has done a great job. Dave Martinez with all of you know with losing Bryce Harper has had to make several different changes. He's done a great job. Last question before we move on: Who who's won in tonight? Emily, who's winning tonight? Yeah, I, I want to say the Brewers because I have hope for the underdog. Yes, and that'll make a very interesting postseason. I, I feel a butt coming but, in. There you go. But the Nationals. <laughs> you got the Nationals. The Nationals. No, you got the Nationals at home. <laughs> so you know the Nationals. The here's here's the thing. The four. So it's it's interesting on the AL side. Four of the last five years, the home team has won. On the NL side. Four of the last five years, the road team has come out on top. So that would favor that history would favor the Brewers, Brewers. here. Mm-hmm. Charlie, who you got? Nationals, baby. Nationals. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna agree. I, I got the Nationals. I just think that you know Scherzer is gonna be very difficult to I, honestly shake. I'm, I'm, I'm really big on offense this year. You know, this year with the juiced up balls that you know they don't like to talk about in the media. <laughs> you know, everybody's hitting a lot of home runs. Everybody's getting a lot of hits. That's why you see. So many players with 30 home runs. So who, like, who hits a homer tonight? Uh, Rendon and Soto are going to hit home All runs. All right, Rendon and for Soto. Sure. And, you know, um, who for the Brewers? Let's see. Moustakis. I don't know. Moustakis? You see what I'm saying? I don't even – like, I feel like all the Brewers' big players are out. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't see it. All right, let's 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 move on. So I want to go a little more in-depth to the National League. And I want to start off um, – I want to kind of shift gears a little bit. The winner of this game tonight um, – Faces the Dodgers. Huh. <laughs> the Dodgers, they won, what was it, 106 games this year? Yeah. Th- that has, if, if that isn't a franchise record, it's got to be it, it's their real fr- close. It's their franchise record. It's got to be, yeah. So, like, this first year, four teams have won 100 games. and um, Yeah, first team in the playoffs, yeah. Yeah, so Washington, so the winner of the of tonight's game goes and play goes to L.A. and they play the Dodgers on Thursday. Are the Dodgers the team to lose? Are, are the Dodgers like is is this the Dodgers to lose at this point, Emily? Or like, or can can the wild card actually challenge Los Angeles in this division series? I feel like the Dodgers are so used to going to the postseason that it's just another game for them, and they're going to pull through like they have been these past couple years. That's true, and and that's the one thing in like in the American League. I think that the teams you, like. I think the Astros, Yankees, and Twins, and even even the wild cards, you had to get 96 wins to go to the playoffs in the American League this year. The National League, it wasn't as much, because the American League, they were much more dominant in interleague play this year. That's why you see more, that's why you see higher win totals in the American League than you do in the National League. You also have higher uh, loss totals in the American League than in the National League. But, Charlie, um, does, does anyone have a chance against the Dodgers in the National League? Honestly, nobody has a chance against the Dodgers. Maybe I, I really want to see the um, the Braves go to the a- I mean, a- um, NLCS and give the Dodgers a run for their money. But just like last year, like, it's it's the Dodgers. The National League is the Dodgers. But we've seen we've seen the Dodgers lose against good American League teams. The thing is, like, the Dodgers are so – they're so good. You know, honestly, you know – I was a doubter of the Dodgers last year when they got rid of Puig. Dodger doubter. Uh, when they got rid of Puig, you know, Matt Kemp was old, but Matt Kemp had a decent year last year. Now he don't play for nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really think that the Dodgers just really, really they're gonna they're gonna go to the World Series, but I don't think they're gonna win. So and but I don't I just don't see anybody beating them. Like I think in the playoffs, experience matters. Dodgers yes. Dodgers have Agreed. experience. They have a great closer. 
you know, Bellinger having a great year, unlike like way better than last year. Um, you know, Jock, uh, Jock Peterson, Peterson, he's doing amazing. Yeah. Max Muncy, you know, super. We see Max Muncy uh, be clutch last year. So I think I think this year is just. It's again. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be Dodgers going to the World Series and Dodgers gonna lose. But again. you know who else has playoff experience? The Ooh. Brewers. They do. The Brewers, and if the Brewers win tonight, that it's a rematch from last year's LCS. You're and... right, but it's just like they just don't have Yelich, and I, I, I don't. Th- I don't think they can do it. Yeah. And 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 Braun helped as well last year. What? So the Dodgers this year probably have the Cy Young winner in uh, Hyunjin Ryu. They probably have uh, Clayton Kershaw is a uh, a modest number two. Honestly, he's a, to me Kershaw's a number three. Yeah, I like I like Bueller. Yeah, Walker Bueller yeah. also in there. Walker Bueller had multiple games with over fifteen Ks. Yeah, that's that's, that's true. That's amazing. He, he's a strikeout king. But like I, you know, like I was uh, telling Johnny on the show yesterday, like the NL West is bad. The NL yeah. in general is bad. Like the, there's not a lot of competition. So when you see when when the, you put a a, a, D, a really solid team together, you can just outright wa- start washing these teams. Yeah. Like the NOS is so bad. You got if you if you see the um the standings, like the clo- you know how many games back the, the Diamondbacks were? They're like 22 games back. And that's second place. Yeah. That's that, that's twenty one games back. Yeah, twenty one. Giants games. for twenty nine. That you see what I'm saying? That, yeah. that that's not competition. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You, t- you see teams like the NL Central, the last place team is twenty two games back. So you you see you see the difference. That's true. So you mm-hmm. see the difference in the competition. That's yeah. why I don't. I'm not a firm believer of the Dodgers are this superior team. Yeah. They're a great team, but I think it's I think it's very good management. For sure, because ever since they got rid of Don Mattingly, you know, I and love Don Mattingly. Dave Roberts. Yeah, yeah. He Dave Roberts has been doing great. Yeah. Emily, what is the Dodgers kryptonite? How how are they going to lose? If, if they if they do lose, how I, how would they lose? I feel like they get postseason like like, like anxiety shock and anxiety. Yeah. yeah, like as soon as they see something good going for them, something always happens, and it has happened for the past couple years. Or is it is it that, or is it they're just running into better teams? Because like, hey, you've they've had to play two hundred win teams in the World Series every year, like the last two years, and you know, but also the thing with the Dodgers, they are, are they, is, is, is it finally their time? That's the thing about baseball. It's anybody's game. So if you come out with the right mindset, with the right lineup, it could go so good for you or so bad for you. Yeah, everything resets at this point. Yeah. It, it's it everyone's, everyone's zero and zero. Regular season. Exactly. But, you know, I just, with the Dodgers, they, they're such an enigma, in my opinion. They, they, they are built to last. They, they're built to last. They're built to be like kind of like the 90s Braves, where the 90s Braves made the playoffs every year. 90s Braves, how many championships did they win? One. One. They won one World Series. Thanks to the Yankees. Out of 14, <laughs> out of 14 consecutive playoff oh, appearances, that with like, one um, World Series. That was with John Smoltz and... Uh, John Smoltz, Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox was... And uh, Tom Glavin. Glavin. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. And, you know, I see some similarities with this, with this Dodgers team. Dodgers have won the division, I want to say, like, the last seven, eight, seven, seven, eight years, something like that. Yeah, it's something How like many that. World Series do they have to show for it? None. A big goose egg. Honestly, I think it's been a real um, shift in the last, ever since the Cubs won. After the Royals won on the World Series, there was a big shift in American League. Like, the shift, it, 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 was, in, it was National League in a lot in 2010s. Where like the National League teams were good, they were winning the World Series. You know, the Giants are winning every other year. I think it, in the last, especially the last three years, it being a big shift back to the AL. You know, Yankees, Red Sox, Astros, and and even Cleveland in that mix. Now the Twins, that these big powerhouse teams mm-hmm. are. You know, I think that the National, that's also National the League is not keeping up. The MLB has gone towards power. It, there, it's a very power based league right now, mm-hmm. and in the American League, you got a designated hitter. In the National League, you don't have that luxury. I didn't even that's think on that's I on the National League. Like that. That's on the National League though. National League needs to get rid of the pi- the pitchers hitting. <laughs> like the National League, their whole like it, it's them wanting to stay true to the to the you know origins of the game. You know just but at this point you know when the American League is three hundred win teams when they're you know when the Yankees are making records for home runs when the Twins are making records for home runs when the Astros have records for runs like it's it's just at this point you know how much are you really hurting yourself here? And I don't know. It, it could play, it could play a role here down the stretch. One thing I want to give the Dodgers is, you know, 
now Kershaw has a little re- um, relief. He's not the guy. You, that is true. He, mm-hmm. He's not the guy you always want to give the ball to. Because remember back in back in the days when um, the National League was like doing a lot better in the playoffs, um, Kershaw used to get rocked. People mm-hmm. people used to forget that Kershaw would throw a, a Cy Young. Kershaw year, was get a, rocked in, in the first or second round. Yeah, in, Kershaw. In games. Kershaw has this just tendency of just not performing up to his standards in the playoffs. It's it's not even that he plays bad. He just doesn't finish. Like he'll he'll get yeah. he'll get that deep in the game, like that that close three two game, and then somebody rocks. He him. he isn't a postseason hero yet. Yet yet, and I say yet because you know, hey, you got another October to prove yourself. Heroes become legends in October, and yeah. Kershaw could be one of those. We'll see, but the the Yankees took two out of three against the Dodgers this year. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So that is that is that the like the benchmark. That's the benchmark. Okay, that's right the there. benchmark. So that that and, shows and, how and only one of those games was close. Okay, home, okay, only one of the games. But just to clarify, <laughs> just to clarify. no one was sure. And I'm pretty sure we beat. Uh, what's the Japanese pitcher? Ru Ryu Ryu. Yeah, we rocked him. Oh, you rocked him. We rocked him, and I don't think we faced Kershaw or Bueller. So okay, so that that means that uh, if the Yankees rocked him, then uh, sorry Dodgers, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, I kind of want to. I kind of want to dive into the. NLDS matchup that's already set, and we already know that it's going on Cardinals Braves. So here's here's the thing: we talked about this on the air uh, last season, Charlie. I remember this, and I said I said the Cardinals would represent the National League in the World Series, this and year? yeah, I did. I said I said it'd be Cardinals Astros. Um, am I sticking by that? Yeah. You shouldn't. I, I I shouldn't, and I won't. Uh, the thing with the Cardinals, though, um, the reason why I like their team Mm -hmm. is they have a good mix of old and young. I think, uh, I think Brian Schilt is managing this team the right way. And he's brought the culture back to the Cardinals that was there, you know, in, in the two thousands where they were consistently winning their division, consistently going deep in the playoffs and consistently just putting out good baseball and the Cardinals have been that team that, you know, when was the last time you, the Cardinals were a bad baseball team? Never. They were never out of like, the, exactly. even, even when they were losing the division, they were never a bad team. They were always in the mix. Kind, and kind of, you got to have how, respect for teams like that. I love teams like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't say I love the Cardinals, but <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I've, I've always had a respect for the Cardinals. You, you respect them. You don't yeah, love them. I don't. Yeah. I the Cardinals them. are a hard team to love. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, Hackgate. I think that. I think uh, Cardinals won the division this year because they won a lot of close games. You that know, is they, true. They have Car- Carlos Martinez. Uh, Carlos Martinez is a good closer. He, uh, only three blown saves. Yeah. He he does very good in in, the, in, cl- in closing out these close games. There, I'm pretty sure the um, the Cardinals run differential isn't that great. They're not gonna pound you on the baseball field, but they're gonna win these close games. But I think the Braves are just a little too powerful um, t- for them to lose. It's gonna be a good series. Probably will go to five. But I got the Braves. Yeah. Cardinals win differential is 102. That is the no, smallest. The, 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 the run differential. Yeah, the run differential yeah. is a plus 102. It yeah. is the smallest among all 10 playoff teams. Yeah. Um, and the the Braves, though, are a close second at plus 112. Yeah, but the Braves hit hit for better average. Like if you look up the mat, if you look at the matchups, like the um the Braves, they're ninth in the league, while uh, uh St. Louis twenty third, and they they've scored almost a hundred more runs. Yeah, that's the thing about St. Louis is St. Louis is not a power hungry team. Yeah, which is part of the reason why they got Paul Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt's gonna need to step up this that series if they expect to win. Yeah. So Emily, mm-hmm. Cardinals, they are coming in as the weakest team in the national league in terms of uh record at least among the division winners i I guess they're technically one game better than the brewers okay but um you know what is the key for the cardinals to make some uh noise in the playoffs consistency 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 that's the only thing when when you're have a, a team that doesn't push out as much numbers as all these other big time people in the playoffs Consistency and and really like trusting the team to pull through mm-hmm. is the best thing that you can do. Because um, if you look at the numbers, they don't got it. But no, they don't. On the on the field, it's a different story. Like that's true. Call me biased, but um, Molina, ride or die, that guy pulls it through. He does. I respect it. And that he's a he's a 
He's the cornerstone of that franchise, mm-hmm. part of the city, um, part of the identity of the city. Here's so I'm looking at uh, a game from a couple days ago, and it, it looks like it looks like something very close to what their postseason lineup would be. And Dexter Fowler batting two thirty six, Tommy Edmond batting three hundred seven. That's the highest average on this team. Three hundred seven. Keep that in mind. Paul Goldschmidt batting third two fifty six, Marcelo Zuna two forty two, Molina two seventy one, Matt Carpenter two twenty six. Struck out four times in this game in four at bats. Not good. Paul DeYoung two thirty four, Harrison Bader two oh seven. That's pretty close to what their starting nine would be. And then Adam Wainwright, I guess technically would either I would assume Adam Wainwright if he doesn't start game one would at least start game two I haven't paid too much attention to uh the Cardinals rotation this year to give you a definitive answer but you know I just I think that this team is gonna have to rely on pitching in order to get the job done Charlie what do you think about the Cardinals this year definitely gonna have to rely on pitching because um we've seen you know we've seen the braves you know they get behind they they might not come back and their pitching isn't amazing they have they have they got solid pitching but i'm not i'm not gonna say they have any like powerhouse uh pitchers on on their team you know decent bullpen but um i think i think the offense is really deadly for the braves but the cardinals definitely the pitching has to come in good you gotta you gotta keep it close you got to keep it yeah. close so you could bring in Martinez. But beyond that, if they don't keep it close, like, you know, Matt Carpenter hasn't had the year he had last year. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So he, he, he was he was an animal last year, but they didn't even make the playoffs last year. Yeah. This, this year he's kind of he's kind of take a step back. If he come if he comes in, um, comes up this year and starts playing um, in, in the postseason, start playing a lot better. How he used to when he was playing, like he plays first time when he was playing third back in the day. When he, he was w- played, he played third in this game. You might see him yeah. play yeah, with Goldschmidt played, there. Yeah. yeah, he plays like both now. But when he when 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 Middle Matt Carpenter, yeah, when Matt Carpenter steps up, it would, the Cardinals would definitely um t- to give a run for their money. Dexter Fowler is pretty good. You know, he won he won the World Series in twenty sixteen Cubs. So we we've seen mm-hmm. we seen him come in clutch. You know, he hit that home run in the Game Seven World Series to lead off the game, but. We'll see. It's good. It's gonna. It's good. this is gonna be an uh, interesting series to watch. Even though the thing is with the National League, it's like, uh, it's like who's gonna win to lose to the Dodgers. That that's that's the way I always yeah. think about it. So, same way with the like with the Astros with the AL. It's like, oh, who's gonna win to to lose to the Astros? That's how, that's what I think. Yeah. Fun fact about Matt Carpenter. So, my brother, sixth grade, his English teacher was his fiance at the time, wow. <laughs> and now now his wife. Uh, cause Matt Carpenter is a uh, Houston born and raised. So, uh, gotta, gotta throw that in there. Um, but you know, in, in October, good pitching beats good hitting, but are, is the Braves hitting too much for this Cardinal staff? You I know, think so if you look, if you look at, I'm, I'm going to pull up a lineup from a couple days ago, uh, Braves Mets from the 28th. You have Dansby Swanson batting 251, uh, Ozzy Albies 298, uh, Freeman, 294. Donaldson, 259. Uh, you have Mark Kakis, 287. Adam Duvall, 263. Brian McCann, 252. World Series champion, Brian McCann. Wonder where he got that ring from. Yeah, I yep. wonder. Mm-hmm. I Yankee, wonder. Yankee I wonder. The I that. wonder. We'll have to get rid of him. And, you know, Ronald, Ronald Acuna didn't play in this game. Honestly, I, you, know, you know why I like the Braves this year? I think adding Josh Donaldson and McCann really helped him. McCann, that is true. McCann, with, McCann really breaks – like, he has rela- – he, he's not just a catcher. He has relationships with the pitchers. When he used to play for the Yankees, um, CC said something like, I seen Brian McCann – have uh, breakfast with each pitcher, each like a different pitcher each day. He wants to know you. He wants to break down with you. He wants to talk to you about baseball. He wants to know your good habits and bad habits. So when he when he when he's calling the game, he he, he he's he's like almost like thinking like you. He he want he wants to like be inside your head. He wants to have that good relationship with you, and he brings that you know I know how to win mentality. And you know he he's coming back to the Braves because that's where he started his career at. You know what I'm saying? When he was that, you know, amazing all-star, which even got him to get big money. 
And then Donaldson, you know, Donaldson is used to, you know, when he was MVP in 2015 with the Blue Jays, he was, he was used to be that guy. Now that he can take a step back and, and not have that pressure to be that guy, I feel like, you know, he started he started the season off kind of slow, but as as this, um, the year progressed, he started really getting to himself, getting, um, you know, getting better at bats. You know, Acuna, Acuna is, is the leader of that team to me. And it's pretty yeah. obvious. So now Donaldson's like, okay, I'm playing behind this guy. You know, we could just have fun. I could just be an addition, a, a benefit, a perk to this team. And that's what Donaldson is. And I think that's what um, the Braves were missing last year to go deep in the playoffs. That's why I think they have the series. Yeah, Emily, thoughts on thoughts on the Braves? I want to I want to hear your opinion on on the Braves and their uh, postseason aspirations. I don't really follow much NL, but um, what I do know is that they they weren't somebody that. People were expecting. Um, when you think of the Braves, you really never think of postseason um, appearances. At least, at least recently. At least recently, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I think they might give Cardinals a run for their money, for sure. Yeah. I mean, look, Acuna hasn't played for a week. They've been resting him for the playoffs. The Braves the Braves wrapped up this division pretty early on in the season. I mean, I think a lot of teams – I think a lot of people expected the, the Phillies to make a run – I think, you know, but the Phillies this year, I think, were one of the bigger disappointments in the league. Sure. I think the Phillies just, they, they paid too many guys who are, who had, like, lingering injuries or, like, injuries that are about to come and guys who are just kind of, like, wearing down. They were kind of like how the Yankees used to play back in um, 05, 06. They used to just pay old vets. That's why I'm like, you gave McCutcheon too much money. You gave Robertson too much money. You know, these guys, these guys are getting into, um, like, um, early 30s, late, uh, mid 30s. That's when these guys start declining. You can't be paying these guys money because they're the, they're the best on the market. That doesn't, sure, that, yeah. does, that does not win games, divisions, anything anymore. Like, it's, it's a young man's sport right now. Yeah. And you look at Acuna, though. Uh, last season, the postseason, 16 at bats, uh, batting average of 188. Who, who did he face in the first round? He, they played, I believe, the, Bre- the Brewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brewers are hot. Right. Well, no, well, no, they played, they played the Dodgers. They played the Dodgers? Yeah, the, okay. Bre- the Brewers got the Rockies. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So, you know, Acuna, Acuna's going to need to step up for the Braves, in my opinion. Uh, if, this is he, second, second or third year? He's, what's his, he's what's for his, sure. He's... Uh, this is second season. Yeah, so like he was like it's a rookie, rookie last year. Rookie, rookie going into playoffs. He's he has sophomore a bad year. now. He's so final question. Just you know, how do you see the NL playing out? And so, so give me who you think's winning the divisional series. Who do you think's winning the championship series? Emily, I'll start with you. Let me pull up my little bracket. You're gonna pull up your little I'm bracket. Up my little bracket. Pull up your little okay. bracket. So it's gonna be Dodgers and Braves. Dodgers over Braves. Yeah. All right, Charlie, you agree with Emily? I definitely agree with Emily. It was yeah. going to be Dodgers, Braves, and Dodgers probably take it in five or six. Dodgers so, in five or six, okay. I'm going to go with six. All right, give give the Braves a little credit. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go I'm going to go Dodgers sweep over the the um in the divisional series. I think the I think I got the Braves in four and I got the Dodgers in six over the Braves. Right, I'm going to agree with you on that, Charlie. Yeah. All right, let's let's uh let's move on to the main event. Let's just let's just let's just let's just get let's just get started. The AL, and I want to start with tomorrow night's wild card. Uh, Rays and A's, yes, sir. the rhyming squads over here. The Rays and the A's. Um, you know, <laughs> you know. I think we had a segment on hitting the field once. Um, it was it wasn't this past year. I think it was the year before. Um, it was like almost like a satire segment, and it was. I think I think that. It was it was Kyle Graham and it was Zach, and they were talking about who was going to the World Series. And they, and they were saying the Rays. <laughs> I think I think Zach said Zach said the Rays and uh, Kyle said the A's. And believe it or not, <laughs> these two teams are just eight wins away from the World Series, they really are. and they got to start tonight. They got to start tomorrow night in Oakland. Uh, you know, two very different styles of play. Also very similar in how they and how they get things done. Uh, Emily, why are the Rays here? Like, just you're you're from Tampa, right? I am from Tampa. So, so why are the Rays here? Um, honestly, I could not tell you. Oh my god! Everyone really just pulled through <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. Like it was, it was, I like people got injured. They came back and boom, better than ever. 
I mean, when you look at the Rays, they they came into the year, you know, the Red Sox were favorites and the Yankees were for sure. The Yankees and the Red Sox were for sure the top two. And I don't think that was very, uh, I don't think that was much, I don't think anyone questioned that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, hey, the Rays are, uh, it's October 1st and the Rays are still, yeah, we're still, still playing there. baseball. Still yep. Charlie. Tell me about the Rays, man. Man, the Rays, I just think they're just a really resilient team, man. I, I've watched so many Rays games where, like, I'll be so pissed. I'm like, I'm like, how are this team still in the game? Like, I watched two games live this year, and, you know, one game they took Yankees into, like, uh, like the seventh inning. They just start blowing it open. Austin Meadows, Tommy Pham, they just start hitting home runs. I'm pissed. I leave the game early. <laughs> I leave the game early. I was so pissed. And, um, the, you know, the bullpen's good. These guys just co- they play good defense. They, they they really play fundamental baseball. They, they, they hit in between the lines. They're not always trying to swing for the fences. You know, um, it really just shows how, how much progress from um, last year to this year. Um, last year they they won. They weren't a bad team last they, year. They weren't a bad team last year. They just but there you had two one hundred win teams above them. So they 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 could have easily been a playoff team last year. But it it was just you know it's hard when you're in the AL East. Yeah. So I just think the the Rays they have more to prove than the A's because we know the A's are a pretty solid team and they they've already had kind of like this core group that's been going good and guys really stepped up for the A's this year. But I think like this year. The, the Rays are just – they're more hungry than the A's. So I believe – because they're both equally matched. These are two teams that it, – it's literally a coin toss mm-hmm. for these two teams. Sure. So, yeah. So I, I just think – I'm going to go with the Rays because, you know, I like Tropicana Field. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go you with do? That. Yeah. It's, I actually like it. I People Tropicana hate it. Field. I've been to Tropicana Field more than any stadium in America. Okay. Emily, make the case for Tropicana Field for me. Okay. I'm, we're going to go off course here. This is okay. ridiculous to me. <laughs> okay, so Tropicana Field. First of all, wait. How many baseball stadiums have you been to? I've been to 10. 10. Wow. Okay. So mm-hmm. and is Trop- where does Tropicana Field rank on this list? Um, that's a good question. Uh, top, top five. Okay. Top five? Ma- make the case for it because okay. I'm puzzled. Okay. Uh, so in the words as, of Anthony Bruzzo, I am puzzled. <laughs> as a kid, I grew up you know, going to race games, and they have this giant tank yes. in the outfield. The, with, where they have rays. Where they have Actual real rays. rays. So, um, it's so cool. What team do you know has the actual mascot just chilling in their... Marlins got rid of theirs. Yeah, yeah. Marlins don't have it. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's not, not the best gonna, team they're compared to. St. Louis isn't going to have the Cardinals. Like a thing of Cardinals, it's just a bird cage. A bird cage? No, they're not going to do that. Um, and the um, the stadium itself, it's really nice. It's always clean. There's, it's always it's always a great asp- atmosphere. You can never go wrong at a Rays game unless you know it's the Yankees, because then people start getting a little. One thing. Little one thing I will defend the Rays in Tropicana Field here. Um, I've been to four MLB stadiums. I'm not as seasoned as emily is here with her 10 <laughs> um but i've been to four um and obviously growing up in houston minute Maid is there but minute Maid isn't my favorite stadium that i've been to it's i don't have you been to course field no. go to course field that's a great place to watch a baseball game you got the mountains in the background i was i went in late june it was you know the perfect what time really to go pretty? what the what? new marlin stadium the new marlin stadium it's so pretty yeah it's honestly, I went for like a tour because yeah. they weren't playing, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Wow, they really stepped it up." Too bad they're team if only they could back up for it. Host playoff games in that building, maybe, maybe one day, oh, maybe. <laughs> but back, back, back to uh, let's get back on track here a little bit. We will talk about this later. <laughs> I, honestly, we could totally have just like a talk about all the baseball scene. That could that could work for a good two hours. I could totally mm-hmm. talk about that for a while. But you know, I think part of the reason why the Rays have come out and almost. You know, come under the radar. Uh, I won't say out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're under the radar. Um, I think it's because they have so many pitchers that they can use in so many different positions and, you know, matchups. And Kevin Cash is not afraid to use – to not use a single person in that bullpen. Mm-hmm. He's not afraid to, you know, change pitchers at a moment's notice. He He's using openers. He's, he's really managing that baseball team. And – you know, t- 
talent wise, they might not be up there with with the Yankees and with the Twins and with the Astros. But for sure, Kevin Cash should be the manager of the year. Yeah, he's ninety six wins with that roster. He's pulled it together. Ninety six wins with that roster is was, mighty impressive. That was the lowest um, payroll in baseball, and with the mm-hmm. lowest payroll in baseball, Take, taking a trick out of the A's book, they they beat the Red Sox by I want to say like eight or nine games, something like that. And yeah. the Red Sox, if they don't have the number one payroll in baseball, it's, they're they're top they're, three. For they're sure. in the top three. Twelve games, the Rays were better than the than the Red Sox by. That's crazy to me. You know what? I I feel like um, Cash had to live up to Madden's legacy and Madden's standards. So I do think that there's some truth there. Yeah. To really um, show that he is worthy of the job. Um, And going after Madden, that's not an easy job. Because, yeah, (laughs) Joe Madden also very shifty as a manager very um because the thing about the rays is the rays are not a free agent destination you're not gonna you're not gonna have these big guys say oh i want to go play for the tampa no. i want to go play at tropicana like people don't want to play at tropicana field despite your <laughs> glowing reviews of it, it's not how um, it is. Uh, maybe maybe they should go maybe maybe you're seeing something that they aren't but <laughs> anyway i think that with the rays have just the strategic side of baseball, Kevin Cash is proving that it actually exists and you actually can do something with your guys if you use them correctly. Mm-hmm. And I think that Joe Ma- and I think not Joe Madden, I think Kevin Cash has done a great job uh, with this lineup. He has a lot of young guys. He has a lot of mm-hmm. rookies, uh, Brandon Lowe, Nate Lowe. Oh, there's so many Lowe's on the team. Yeah. I think they're related. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, that. maybe not. Joey Wendell, a very under the rated acquisition. Um, you know what I noticed about the Rays lineup? They have, they're they fresh people. So you're not going to yeah. get... They're not super burnt out. They still have a lot of growing to do so that Cash can go in and form them and shape them into like the players that we need. I think... Me being the Rays fans. Need for... <laughs> in order to you know go on into the playoffs and maybe even win the World Series. Charlie. Finish a sentence for me. The Rays will win tomorrow night because... Because Austin Meadows and Tommy Fan will come in clutch. Yeah. And and Morton will pitch an amazing game on the road. See, that's the thing with me. I think I think this falls more on Charlie Morton than this falls on anyone. Because the one thing that the Rays... Look, the Rays had Blake Snell last year. Mm-hmm. Blake Snell's been injured this year. Blake Snell has not been able to live up to what he was able to produce in 2018. Charlie Morton has been their ace this year. And he, you know, it's funny because he was the number three, number four guy in Houston been able to go to Tampa he was he was going to retire he's you know had n- a new lease on life it's crazy how a guy that was a middle reliever just not like a middle of the road kind of pitcher just you know seven eight years ago has turned into an ace and he's turned into the guy that you want with the ball in his hands in a one game playoff it's insane it's insane to me 16 and 6 305 ERA great numbers for Morton over 240 Ks yeah so so I think that the A's are going to have a challenge, but also the A's have the talent and have the personnel mm-hmm. to give the Rays a fight. But the A's only know how to lose. That's <laughs> all they know how to do. They only know how to lose. And I mean, hey, would you rather either know how to lose in the playoffs or not have any playoff experience at all? I, I feel you on that, but I just don't think... Um, and that's that's why Charlie Morton is so important in this game. Yes. Charlie Morton has pitched in Game 7 of the World Series and won. Mm-hmm. He's the only real logical guy. I mean, I guess maybe you can make a case for Tommy Pham. I didn't even know that. But yeah. Charlie Charlie Morton was on the mound for five innings in Game 7 of the 2017 series. And he was dominant. Dominant. Yeah, you guys won, what, 5-1, five 5-2? To five to five, it was 5-0 it was in the second inning, and that was it. And then I think it was 5-1, the final. Charlie Morton. I know. I know. I know how that makes you feel. I I I know how that makes you feel. I watched that game in Buffalo Wild Wild. That's why. I was sad. That's why Charlie Morton is so important to this. So, but the A's here, they they have the upper hand when it comes to experience. At least they know what playoff baseball feels like. At least they know what it looks like. At least they know how to, you know, maneuver. And they they know how to 
they know how to lose. The thing is, I mean, so they know the how to lose. Yeah. So, I, it's possible the 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 Rays can choke, but because you know the A's might feel like, oh, it's our time this year. You know, they got Marcus Simeon doing really good. Um, but I don't know, man. Like I, I like it, on it, paper. On paper, the A's the A's are, are the better team. The A's are the better team. But, but then again, on paper, when you play the Rays. A yeah. lot of teams that look is, like the better team. Yeah, a lot of exactly. a lot of teams look like the better team. Um, who do you got? I, I think I know y'all's answers. I got the race, hands down. I got the hands race down. too. I got the race too, but I'm not gonna sleep on the A's because the A's they got they got you know Davis, Chapman, Simeon. They got all types of guys. They got Olsen. Yeah. They got guys who've been stepping up all year. Their um, Hendricks is not a bad closer at all, but um, they you know. They got these main guys got to step up on their lineup if if they're gonna, if they're going to win this game at all. Let me make a case for the A's here because y'all clearly ain't. No, <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. The A's are the A's are at home. I yes, like I like the fact home. that they're at home. They play uh, they play really well at home. Um, you also have like the thing with the A's is that they haven't named a starting pitcher yet, which yeah. likely means that they are going somewhere in the bullpen. They're probably having an opener, probably doing something. They are using. They are giving the Rays a taste of their own medicine. Didn't the Rays start that whole opener thing? The Rays did. Yeah. And but I mean, when you have Charlie Morton pitching the way he is, you have to start Charlie Morton. Yeah. I think with the A's though, you have to take into account he uh, with the A's they are simply the, like they also like the Rays can surprise you, and they can throw different looks at you, and they can they can change the game and different aspects and you know they have several different guys on that roster that can get you some get you a run can can you know hit for power can you know hit for average hit for contact matt chapman 249 i think he led the team in home runs this year if he if he didn't he was pretty close i think it was 36 home runs yeah and you know they like they have a lot of like marcus Simeon, 33 home runs ramon loriano 24 home runs Matt Olson, you look at him, thirty six home runs, tied for the tied for the team lead. Chris Davis kind of took a step back from hitting what almost well, he had over forty home runs last year. He had like yeah. twenty. Chris Davis, twenty three home runs. Um, his year has been a bit um, disappointing, but I, you know I think that the A's will win this game. I think I think that they are just they're they're more ready for the moment, and that's not to you know trash on the Rays or anything like that, but. I think that this, I think it's gonna be a close game. It's definitely gonna be a close game. It's gonna uh, be a good game. Don't be surprised if you see extra innings. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised if uh, you know Morton goes nine innings. Honestly, this game is probably the hardest game or series to predict in this whole playoffs for sure. Yeah, I want to quickly you know pivot over to the Twins and Yankees here, Charlie. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna put the timer on for three minutes. You have three minutes to talk anything you want about the Yankees and explain why you think they should win the World Series. Okay. Three minutes, and I'm starting you uh, right now. Okay. Yankees will – okay. First, let's not gonna go win the World Series. Let's go. They're going to win this series simply because we beat the, um, the Twins, I want to say, five out of the eight times this year. Twins do not have enough pitching to beat the Yankees. One of the best – offenses this year you know everybody's like oh twins hit over 300 home runs if twins hit 307 home runs yankees hit 306 let's be clear um we got all of our guys back except uh talkman you know and and Ta- and, and deli Patances. so you know what, what, and we we lost herman that really hurt us but we got sevy back paxton's i'm pretty sure gonna be our game one starter we're gonna go with tanaka i would go with sevy game three hap you know, throw him down somewhere else. I don't care where he goes. But um, we have the best bullpen, be, uh, the best bullpen besides the Astros. So I don't think the Twins stand a chance. The Twin- best bullpen besides who? The Astros. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, Yankees and Twins, you know, uh, Yankees, Twins, and Astros have the best offenses um, in the M- MLB, not just American League. They have the best, um, I mean, the best offenses in the whole league. But, you know, people like to say, like, oh, 
Um, the Yankees pitching isn't that great, but we've seen the Yankees beat really good teams. We've seen guys like the the, bull, the bullpen for the Yankees a little shaky. Like Chapman is a little shaky sometimes. Tommy Kane's a little shaky sometimes. But I'm telling you, in these big games, these guys come in clutch. Boone is a great manager. Boone fights for his guys. These guys get fired up. These guys hit big hits. Sanchez, Torres, Stanton's back. I'm so happy Stanton's back. Stanton actually looks good. Honestly, I didn't want Stanton to come back, but he actually looks good. I think in like he only, he only had like, you know, 19 played appearances, but he's hitting like four, a 429 and runners in scoring position. You know, we weren't facing that many good teams, whatever. But guys like, you know, DJ LeMayu, oh my God, biggest pickup ever. I remember when Cashman signed him, I said, who is this guy? Why did you sign him? And then, you know, he looks great this whole year. He's, in my opinion, he's the MVP for the Yankees. You know, it's not Judge. We we lost Hicks, but, you know, Gardner has, he's, like, guy's like 34 years old. He just hit his career high in home runs. Yeah, juiced up balls, whatever. But, he, <laughs> but he's going to, he, he's doing great, and he's going to do great in center field. The biggest problem for the Yankees, it's not even if we're going to win, is who we're going to play. Everybody's healthy again. Who we're going to play in the outfield? You're going to put Guardy in center. You're going to put Judge in right. Who's going to play left? Who's going to play third? You're going to put Stanton in left? If you do that, listen, if, if you put Stanton in left, then that means you have to, um, who are you going to play at third? Urshela's doing amazing. LeMayu's doing amazing. Um, what I would do is, you know, if I'm Boone, Boone, you know, listen to this right now. I will put Urshela at third. I'm going to put LeMayu at first, and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to, I'm going to sit Voight. Voight hasn't been the same since he, he caught his hernia. <coughs> so I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to put, if Edwin and, and, our, uh, and how do you say his last name? And Encarnacion. There you Edwin go. Edwin Encarnacion. There you go. I can't Una celebracion yes. for Edwin Encarnacion. The parrot. You know what I'm the saying? The parrot? Yeah. That's Is that his, what you call that's, him? His, that's his thing. I don't know. All he right. Hit, when he hits a home run, he does this. All right. Yeah. So, if he does uh, that, Charlie, I'm going to ask you edge. one question, <laughs> and I think I know the answer to this Twins question. Twins don't have enough pitching to beat the Yankees. So, so Yankees in how, three, four, or five? five uh, four. Okay. I, I'm, I'm giving the Twins one win, maybe, maybe off Sevy, Paxson, 12 Ks, game one. Emily, do you have a case for the twins? No. No. <clears throat> no. Really? No. That that's a that's a that's a real shame. The Yankees that is a real shame. Should win it all. They should. They should. Should they? And if they don't, I love Emily. Wow. If they don't, well, that's not my fault. I really hope they choke. All right. But they they have everything to win I, it. All. I got a case for the twins. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm I would, not. I would love to hear. Look, this. no, no, no I, I would love to hear this. Look. Who who's gonna win the series? The Yankees. But I've never seen the Yankees losing as the Twins in the first round. This is this is also true. <laughs> but my whole entire living existence. I've, I don't even know if the Twins have won a divisional series. I don't think they have. I don't think May, they have. Uh, okay, okay. They have when um when Kirby Puckett used to be maybe. Well, that was when it was only a four team playoff. Oh yeah. Okay. So like Kirby Puckett in ninety one when they beat the Braves in seven. Yeah. But the the thing with the Twins here, this is. A different Twins team. A Twins team that has fallen under the radar. 100 win Twins. Never happened before where four teams have won 100 games. This is by no means a cakewalk for the Twins. This is, or for the Yankees. The the Twins hit for power. And like you mentioned, Charlie, the, the weakness with the Yankees right now is they're starting pitching. For sure. And that, so here's the thing. In October, in baseball period, but especially in October, good pitching beats good hitting. For sure. Always. And with these different balls, the twins the, the twins are looking for um a way to make this a shootout. If the Yankees go into a shootout with the twins, they Ooh. might win. Nah, they might they win. Might. Look, this series has shootout written all over it. The two best power hitting teams in the mm-hmm. league. I, I see. I see definitely a lot of home runs this series. I'm I, disappointed. I, this game, the series can only go five games. I want it to go too. seven. Like, because if this were the championship series, I believe it would go seven. I, I think this is going to be a five game series. I think the Yankees win in five. But look, you you got to give the Twins credit. You got to you got to give the Twins credit. And look, they 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 probably have one of the weaker pitching. Lineups, and I think that's why the Yankees win the series. I think that it's going to come down to starting pitching, because I think it's the weakest unit for the Twins. I think it's the weakest unit for the Yankees, and that isn't to kind of trash on their pitching. It's more so to complement their supreme power hitting. They're they're both two incredible power hitting teams, for sure. And that's why their pitching suffers from it because they 
are able to score nine runs and then the starting pitching doesn't doesn't need to you know grasp on for dear life I, I just think you know a lot of people are just like people see yankees and home runs but you got to remember like a lot of these guys are shella lemay these these guys hit in between the lines very well yeah. the difference between the yankees last year and this year is they hit in between the lines very well the guys hit very good and with runners in scoring position which is why i i loved not loved but i i i, I was okay with standing out the lineup because Stan mm-hmm. hits a lot of solo home runs. He doesn't hit very good with runners in scoring position. Mm-hmm. I'd rather got I rather guys hit ten home runs and have a bunch of RBIs and a bunch of doubles and triples and singles because they hit with good runners with um in scoring position. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're not gonna win the game. I just wanted to I just wanted to give the twins a little bit of love. They definitely deserve it. And I knew you weren't gonna do that, Charlie. Definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> but uh let's uh let's go to the one hundred and seven when Houston Astros let let's just I just want to say this 2012 the Astros went 55 and 107 2019 the Astros were 107 and 55 crazy 7 year turnaround but it has been done I'm just I'm just going to say I could talk about the Astros for a long long time let's go, it's let's unfortunate go. it's unfortunate that we don't have this much time <laughs> but I'll say this about the Astros just I want I just want you to come up with an argument. How is a team going to beat this team four out of seven games or three out of five games? Literally, I, I dare one of you I'm to like come up with an focus. argument I, I'm, about I the Astros. Wait a second. <laughs> I, I, I dare, I you. dare one of you, double dog dare one of you to come up with an argument for why any team, just you could throw any team. You could throw a National League team in the World Series. You could throw the Yankees. You could throw the Twins. Just give me any team that can beat the Astros right now. And both of you are silent, which means, Give which me proves my point, Give which proves second. my point. Exactly. I want, I want Emily to go first. But you at least got to think about I, it. I got this, but I want Emily you, to you go gotta first. You got to think we, about it, though. We all know he's going to say the Yankees. Um, but <laughs> if you if you get the Astros at a weak spot. Weak spot when? Gotta, I don't know. Got to hit exactly. the Gotta Exactly. Got to um, gotta rock the starters. Rock the starters. Yeah. You gotta if rock. you come in. Yeah, exactly. If you come so in. So you're going to rock. Verlander, Just Verlander, Cole, or Granky? Who who are you gonna rock? Granky or Miley? Miley's not gonna play. You don't think, you don't think he, yeah, put him as he's been one? terrible lately. Wait. He's been he's been god awful in the last month. He <laughs> might not even <laughs> sniff the postseason roster. I'm being like serious. Nah, he'll be on the postseason roster. I, I'm being he might not play. He oh. he really might not play. That's how bad he's been. Oh, and and that's not like they they might throw like Colin McHugh in Game Four if it ever gets to that point. But like in in the divisional series. I don't think you see a fourth starter. I think you go three starters the whole time. If you go into, but no, like a even a series, no, three even starters. in a championship series though, if you get to a seven game series, yeah. you got to play Verlander, Cole, and Granke six out of seven games. So if we're given a team one win, you still got to win three of those six games. I only believe in Jared Cole. I do not believe in Granke and Verlander hype. You don't believe in Justin Verlander who uh, nope. threw a no hitter just a month ago. Uh, you know Just why? Why not? Why? Why don't you believe in Justin Verlander? I don't believe in Justin Verlander hype because you know he might. He's won one World Series. He got traded to the Astros, the team that was he, he won good. MVP, made it to two World Series. Okay. He's won more World Series than the Yankees have in the last couple of years. I give him that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's won two World Series. He, he went won. to the World Series in 2012. He was uh, the MVP of the league. The last pitcher to win the MVP. It was. That was that was a good time, but I don't believe in, in Verlander hype. You know, I think it's I think it's definitely three thousand Jer- strikeouts. Jericho's year two um, five eight ERA. Don't, only way for a team to beat the Astros is rock the starter. If you don't rock the starter, you're in trouble because their offense is good. Their offense is good, and it's not even their main guys who are good. Mm-hmm. Alvarez is having an amazing year. Uriel having an amazing year. Correa has taken, I want to say, a back seat, but he got he felt he fought through some injuries. Right. He's not the same guy, but Altuve is still the same. Let's not Bregman about to be MVP possible. You know what I'm saying? I think I think he might win. Thank over you Trout. for proving my point. Thank you for proving my point. Nine pitchers have thrown for a sub three ERA this season. Three of them are Astros. Oh my god! Bad division. Zero are Yankees. Zero are. They're the only three guys in the in the AL. Now it's hard. It's harder to worst division in the AL though. 
Okay, but LS. in the in the AL period, in the AL, there's more power. There's more cha- more runs are scored in the AL than they are in the NL. So For it's sure. harder to have a lower ERA in the J- AL than Justin it is Verlander in the NL. Justin Verlander has given up more home runs this season than he has in any other year. Well, that's because that? that's because they juice the balls. Thank you, thank you very much. But, but also he's gonna get rocked. And and then you know we talk about the pitching, but look at the hitting. Hitting is amazing, man. Look at the hitting. He, Look, Bregman's having an pick your poison. Alvar- it, Alvarez, the Astros are Alvarez all about rookie of the year. picking your poison. Jordan Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez made people forget about Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Made people For sure. totally forget about him. Well, I, I, I like Bo Bichette. Who? It's Alvarez is. And yo, I, I'm honestly, I'm gonna give you big props right now. Last year when we was on the show on hitting the field, you said on the preview, you said Michael Brantley was going to have a very big year for the Astros. And my man, you were very right. Like middle of the season, I was like, mm-hmm. Michael Brantley is doing amazing right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and while I got, you know, uh, Altuve, I think, was hurt early in the season. So was Correa. Michael Brantley really put the team on his shoulders. And so did Bregman. And honestly, like Bregman, for me. Like, he kind of snuck under the radar for me. Like, I always knew he was good. But, like, when, when I started seeing his stats, like, later yeah. later in the season, I was like, wow, Bregman is really doing good. Michael like, Brantley, 311. Uh, Jordan Alvarez, 313. They got over. Yuli Gurriel, over, 298. Over three guys with 30 home runs. I think it's, four yeah. Four guys. Yeah, and I think four guys with a 300 average almost. Yeah, look, Altuve bats 298. Bregman, 296. Gurriel, 298. Uh, Alvarez, 313. Brantley, 311. Springer two ninety two. That's your top six hitters bat over two ninety. I think I think so. I think Springer chokes in the playoffs. But remember when Springer 20- was the World Series MVP? Listen, my God! Listen, listen. Springer did bad in the first two rounds. This is true. And and and, and, uh, and, 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 and in the World Series, he just miraculously showed up. I was but like, so pissed. But that's, I was like, but that's why the Astros are so hard to beat that's because why. Springer can go cold. But that's fine. There's no way. There's but, just I I have a hard time seeing this. I feel you. Springer, Altuve, Brantley, Bregman, Alvarez, Guriel all go cold. I think Guriel and Bregman. That's and, not happening. I think I think uh, Guriel, Bregman, and Alvarez are you know the X factor this year. But you got to remember in 2017 the ALCS there was three games, to, um by one run the Astros won. Three games, yep. so it's a toss up if the Yankees make it there. But like I said, like oh for sure, I'm not saying I'm yeah. not saying the Astros are going to get this. It's not, not going to be a cakewalk. It's not a cakewalk. It's not going to be a cakewalk because but, you get into these low scoring games, you know, a uh, 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 bloop and a blast, and you look, know, somebody got to leave. There's like the Astros are not going to sweep their way through the through the postseason. It's no, not going to happen. There there are too many talented teams. Exactly, but and I think they still got the way that I see it, bad like, taste in their mouth from last year. I see it like this for the Red Sox, but like the Red Sox were just far and away the best team. They were. I was and so You know pissed. what? I'm going to be honest. I so mad. I'm going to be honest. I see a lot of comparisons with that Red Sox team and this Astros team. Good pitching. Good, good pitching. Hitting. Great hitting. Good defense. Good defense. <sighs> Look. And the, another thing with the Astros, last time the Astros won a World Series, they made, they acquired a big pitcher on the trade deadline. And that's the thing. With, well, like, here's Here's the deal. Garrett Cole was acquired after the World Series. He's yep. likely a free agent this year. He'll probably be the top free agent on the market. He will be the top free agent on the market. If the Astros, th- that's the one thing that's different about this World Series run compared. He, he, he to He wins a ring though. He's he's going to twenty seventeen. He wants to take the check back with the Houston. That's that's the thing. That's the difference between 2017, 2018, 2019. I think this year, twenty seventeen, when they won the World Series, there wasn't necessarily an expectation that they were going to win the World Series. So if the fact that they won the World Series was a surprise in itself, twenty eighteen, I think. It was kind of the Red Sox year, and I think everyone saw that. Mm-hmm. This year, the Ashes are the favorite for the first time. They really, if they lose, it's on them. They have the most pressure now. What? They have the most to lose. They th- And that's the one difference with this postseason compared to the previous two, is the Astros are in the driver's seat, and they just need to drive it home. They when, need to drive. When they won in 2017, it was Dodgers' year to win. That was the won. Dodgers' year to win, yeah. and, they, and they took it. Mm-hmm. And... Th- and so, but also, and this team, they're they're battle tested. They are experienced. They have multiple ways to to beat you, and and that's the, that's the thing. I just it, look. I I asked you guys to come up with an argument for any team I to beat have. the Astros in the World <laughs> Series in the seven game series, and you simply have not. And that proves my point. <laughs> I think someone's going to have to get injured if if any team I, wants honestly, a chance. I I I I don't want that to happen. I, no, I hate, you don't want that I to happen. I hate injuries in the course. playoffs because I always hate the oh well if we would have had this player we would have won. Like no, like I I, I want to beat teams fair and square, you know, always, but you know, Yankee Yankees yeah. is seven. 
um, who do you think is the biggest um, threat to the Astros? Like, who's going to give them the toughest time if anyone gives them a tough time? I assume I assume one team will give them a tough time, have them face adversity. But what is the one team you think that will give the Astros the toughest time, the toughest matchup for the Astros? Go ahead, Molly. I want to say the Yankees. I, ca- I don't – I kind of want to say it. don't really want to say it. The Yankees. But the Yankees. Yeah. Because – they're hitting. They're they're pushing some numbers in the offense, and if they if they can rock the the starting pitcher, it's over. But that's that's honestly really the only. I'll say and, this and though: a miracle if another team really pushes through. The one weakness with the Astros is the bullpen. I know you said that you know the Astros are a good bullpen. Osuna has been put in some difficult situations this year, and. The thing is, th- a lot of times the Astros don't even need to use their bullpen because they're just too busy pounding teams. That's true. So that that's why, but I, that that's why I feel like their bullpen's a little weak. But you know, sometimes they they won't even. they usually their closer is input. Their bullpen is usually well rested. So that's why I'm saying like you know they're pretty yeah. decent bullpen. Osuna this year, um, thirty eight saves. Solid. Thirty eight saves. How many but, blown saves? Um, you know he had saying? a couple. He had a couple. He had a couple blown saves. Um, yeah. and. That's also a difference with this team in uh, 2017 is uh, Osuna, you know, it was Ken Giles. And at the 2018 deadline, they swapped closers. Yeah. Giles went to Toronto and uh, Osuna came to Houston. And my whole thing with Osuna is you kind of, you, you got to give him some support. I've seen Osuna, like I went to a game earlier this year, it was Cubs Astros. It was on Memorial Day. I think it was, it was something like... The Astros had a three-run lead going to the ninth. Osuna comes up, home run, two-run game, home run, one-run game. Astros win by one. So like Osuna got the save, but he he Did made he, really? he made he made the Astros sweat a little bit. Yeah. And you have 107 wins, but there were some games this year where Osuna blew a save, and you know that number could easily be 110. 111 if Osuna doesn't blow those saves. That is the weakness on the Astros roster that, you know, the starters need to shut it down. Hitters need to shut it down so that the bullpen can not sweat it out. You know why the Astros are so good? The hitters do not strike out a lot. They, they, they put, are they, the they, put they the struck ball out the least. Play. They struck out the least this year. They put the ball in play and if you know baseball, good things happen when you put the ball in play. Yeah. All right. Um final thoughts. Uh, I'm going to give you all each a chance to air it out, say whatever you want uh, about the playoffs this year. Emily, ladies first. Uh, just what is the one thing you're looking forward to the most for the postseason? As a race fan, I'm really excited that they're back after six years of not being in the postseason. And maybe maybe it'll be, oh, wait, but different. We don't know. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, wait. <laughs> but hey, hey, you're here. <laughs> the, the Rays are here and 20 <laughs> teams are it. not. Yeah, they, the Red they, Sox are they not. made it this far. What's a couple more games? Yeah, you might as well you might as well go for it. Yeah, yeah, That's Charlie. All I, gotta say. I say this year, I, I really just want to see this playoffs. I want to see a lot of good baseball. I want to see close games. I do not want to see blowouts. Oh, I hate blowouts in the playoffs. Um, I want to see somebody in the ALDS give the Astros a little fuss, please. Just, just, just rock a few starting pitchers. Throw some runs on there. I would love to see that. I want to see somebody give the Dodgers a run for their money in the, in the NL, which I think will be the Braves because I don't think the Cardinals can. But um, and I really need to see the Yankees please take off. Like I, I honestly, I want them. To, I'm gonna give the Twins a game, but I really want them to sweep them, sweep the Twins because I really want them to show them that this Yankee team is not to be trifled with. So um, and I really think like. Even though our pitching is not that good, it's still a Yankees year. It's our first time winning the division in six years. It's been so far. It's been it's been so long since we actually won. So honestly, you know, Astros, uh, Astros, Yankees, ALCS, Braves, Dodgers, NLD, uh, NLCS. I have the Astros beating the Yankees. I, I, honestly, so Astros Dodgers rematch of 2017 and this year I see the same thing as 2017 uh, Astros winning you know it feels probably like in, probably in six it feels like this season um very similar to last year the destination seems pretty set in stone we we, we have a good idea that it is uh Astros Dodgers it, it looks it looks like you know it 
and maybe that's because we've seen it before and it just it just feels right it feels like it's going to be difficult to see it, it go any other way but the the destination seems right i want to see the journey kind of you know maybe maybe take a take a detour or you know maybe surprise people that that's the beauty of october it's the beauty of baseball that you know things can happen like on a switch i'm looking forward to these one game w- playoff with the wild card i'm looking forward to some drama because you know and this year you know i'll i'll be honest like if if it wasn't astros in in the driver's seat i'd probably be kind of frustrated i'd be like you know why is this team so much better than everyone else but now it's on the astros it's it's on the astros if the astros do not win the World Series. It is a disappointment. It is a down year. And this, look, the Astros are built to last. They have a lot of young pieces. They have a lot of players in their prime right now. But it, not going to lie, this year, if they don't get it, this is an opportunity wasted. They might not get a better opportunity to get back there. You only have tomorrow. You don't, there's no guarantees in baseball. There's no guarantees in sports, period. You have a great chance to get this. You got to, Secure the bag, get the ring, and go to Disney World. That's what you got to do, and the Astros got to do it. Uh, Emily and Charlie, I am very happy that you guys have come on. I know for sure that we will be back talking a little more baseball throughout the month of October on the HTF podcast. Uh, Tomorrow, we will be back here again. We'll talk a little bit of football uh, before the remaining uh, October... um, the remaining October podcasts uh, get a little more baseball centric with the playoffs in full swing beginning tonight with Brewers Nationals and tomorrow with Rays A's. Uh, but that's all from us today from inside the WNSC studio in the Nicholson School, uh, Nicholson School of Communication and Media. I'm Jeremy Brenner with Charlie Reyes and Emily Hernandez. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you tomorrow. Let's go.